Well, hey, everybody, and we're into playoff time in uh, men's and women's college rugby. Uh, brackets are out, things like that. I wanted to have a look at the NCR Division Two brackets because I was curious as to see if there was something that was a little bit weird about them. Because uh, I'm, I'm looking at my own rankings, and remember, NCR doesn't use my rankings. They have their own rankings. Uh, they do their own seedings. They do all the things. They, they put a lot of work into them. Uh, but I was curious. Is there anything worth talking about here? So let's have a look, first of all, at who the teams are and who's playing who. Yeah, so you see... Uh, this is a pretty standard grouping of teams for the most part, right? Um, you would want to see high C teams against low C teams, and generally you see that. And uh, but there are a couple of outliers, and I want to talk about them. So let's have a look at if you if you took the eight teams that are highest seed, and then the eight teams that are lower seed, and put them in two columns. Now, ideally, if you have a ranking. Uh, you would have 1 through 8 on one side and 9 through 16 on the other. We don't, and I, um, I haven't looked at the NCR rankings. Maybe they do. I don't know. But they don't for me. Um, and part of that is that there's one team in there that doesn't play, uh, doesn't qualify for NCR's uh, postseason. That's Auburn. Uh, so they're in there. But there, there are teams that say don't finish uh, at such a place that they actually made the, the play-ins or anything like that, but I still have them ranked. Um, I have uh, teams like uh, SLU and Scranton that are still sort of working their way up. So let's have a look, though, at those two columns. And if we're going to match them up, of course, we're going to see that we want to see the highest seed against the lowest seed and the second highest seed against the second lowest seed. And it's supposed to sort of create a little flower, a little asterisk, if you will, of little lines that go back and forth and see. So have a look at those lines and you see this is the ideal situation potentially for the matchups for the playoffs. Now, that's what is sort of like the ideal situation. Now let's have a look at what it is. And you'll see, uh, for the most part, we do get the little asterisk. We do get the little flower of happiness, and we have three outliers that uh, I've got in, uh, in in an orange line. Two where, two places where a, a higher seed is playing a higher seed, and or a lower seed is playing a lower seed. And then what we've got is a relatively high seed playing a relatively high lower seed. So let's talk about these and explain why those are happening. Number one uh, thing to worth looking at, Montana State against Loyola. So uh, I've got Loyola ranked ahead of Montana State. But Montana State, number one, is a conference winner. And number two, uh, Loyola is a number three team out of their conference. So they want to play in, and I've got them ranked higher than Montana State. But I, I do think they're ranked pretty close. But the other question is, what would be appropriate? What is your option? So what they NCR has is Montana State flying into Chicago to play Loyola. And on the other side of that bracket, St. Louis University, the number 22 ranked team uh, for GRR's rankings and the, the lowest ranked team, probably the lowest seeded team in this playoff against the highest seeded team, Northern Iowa. Uh, that makes sense. That's a local thing. It's a it's a hub airplane flight for Montana State. Totally makes sense. Uh, you can't switch anything, right? I mean, if Montana State plays SLU, that doesn't make any sense either, right? And if you moved Montana State to play Northern Iowa, then Loyola would be playing SLU. And that would be a number 13 ranked team against a number 22 ranked team. So I get that. I mean, it's a little bit off. It's a little bit weird, but at the same time, uh, if you look at the travel situation and you also look at the, uh, the fact that Montana State is a conference champion, then uh, it makes sense. So, fine. The second one I want to look at is Grand Valley State against Georgetown. So I've got Georgetown ranked as the number three team in the country. They, 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 they won the mark and GVSU ranks number nine. And I think that that's a bit of a nod to the fact that 
the Great Lakes Conference hasn't always done particularly well in uh, the um, the D2 playoffs. And so maybe, and I, I, honestly, I haven't looked at the NC rankings all uh, all fall. I haven't looked at them at all. And I, for, to, for this video, I suppose I should have looked at them to compare, but I don't like looking at them because I don't like to be influenced. I don't like there to be any implication that I might in, be influenced. So I don't look at them at all. So I don't know what they are. Um, but I would say that I kind of understand that a little bit looking at the four teams that are in that uh, that locale for for that bracket. Uh, would we have been better off potentially with Wisconsin Whitewater against Georgetown and Grand Valley State against Memphis? Maybe. I, I, I kind of think so. But I kind of understand why, because what you have there then is two much more established uh, teams in Georgetown and Wisconsin Whitewater uh, playing in one side, and then two teams still perhaps trying to make their mark on another. Kind of get that. I think I'd like to switch it, but I kind of get it. Okay. So here's finally the one I don't get, and that would be Villanova against Maine. So we know that Mark is a, is a pretty strong conference. Certainly their champion is a strong team, always. Uh, we know that New England-wide CRC is a strong conference. Certainly their champion is strong, always. So here you have two conference champions playing against each other. I've got them ranked four and five in the country. And they're playing each other. Also playing at the same location would be your number three team coming out of New England wide Vermont against Marist, the Liberty Conference champion, a very, very good team. However, has Liberty Conference had the same history that Mark and uh, New England wide have had? No, no, they haven't. So I, this one is a head scratcher to me. I think it's pretty obvious what I, what, what I would have done is I would have had Villanova play Vermont are you allowed to have two teams beginning with V play each other? Maybe that's the rule. Um, and I would have had Maine take on Maris with two teams beginning with M. That's probably what it is. That's probably what it is. It's all about alliteration. But I, that's the head scratcher to me, is why that that's there. It's very possible that I'm wrong, right? It's very possible that one of those teams blows out the other and the other one is just not ready Maine, right, used to be a small college team, but they've, they've beaten, they beat Vermont, they beat Norwich, they won the New England wide, <laughs> did pretty well, uh, they know what they're about. Um, I, I, I just, in the end, I think the losing team in that matchup specifically, maybe a little bit with the Georgetown Grand Valley game, but certainly that matchup, Maine, Villanova, Probably, I'm going to have them be, when I do the rankings, at the end of the season, where your top eight are probably ranked. And I'm probably going to have the losing team in that somewhere in the top eight because of that. So that's it. Overall, I think they did a great job. It's a tough job to do because, because remember, it's not only about... Um, the seeds, but it's also about who won the play-ins this past week, and you've got to plan for that. And it's also about travel. Who can get where? And remember, that's what we said about Montana State. Montana State kind of has to go to Chicago because it just makes it so much easier uh, to fly into Chicago. And um, because of that, they are limited to who they're going to play, and in the end, they have to play Loyola of Chicago in that one. But uh, uh, a couple of question marks... Uh, a couple of things that you're just like, yeah, obviously they're going to play each other, things like that. But I think if um, I'm the losing team out of Maine versus Villanova, I'm kind of thinking like, you know, we would have liked to have made those uh, quarterfinals because we're pretty sure we're good enough to get there.